So welcome back again. Pretty easy day today, so I think you'll you'll kind of like it. We're going to be talking about analog inputs on the PIC and how they work. So first we'll talk about the difference between analog and digital. So they both kind of serve the same purpose. You're sensing something from the outside wor world. Typically it's between like 0 to 5 volts. In a digital world, what happens is if it's anywhere above some threshold, it's just going to be read as a 1. And if it's below that threshold, it's going to be read as a zero. Typically, that threshold is somewhere around two volts. It's usually just a little bit below where you might guess, which is two and a half. Um, and it's really easy to use, um, and it makes a lot of sense, right? Sometimes that's not good enough, though. So you need better resolution. And so that's when you come up with uh, analog. So analog, what it does is, you know, you have coming from the world, um, some voltage signal that's between 0 and 5 volts and what you want to do is you want to get that into your microcontroller. Everything in the microcontroller is saved in ones and zeros and so what happens is there's an analog to digital conversion. So it ranges from 0 to 1023 and if something is 5 volts exactly uh, you will get a reading um, of 1023, which means it's a full 5 volts. If it's somewhere in the middle, um, you'll get a reading of 512, and we'll talk about how you actually get these numbers. And then depending on where it's at in between, here's an example with, with uh, 1 volt, uh, so it looks like that's 205, um, and if it's, you know, 1.1, uh, that would be like, you know, 210 or something, I didn't do the math. Um, but you can see it's a linear scale, um, and you can see exactly what the voltage is between 0 and 5 volts instead of just getting a nice simple 0 or 1. There are 40 pins on the microcontroller. 33 of those can be used for digital I.O. so you can see that there's a ton of digital I.O. However with analog there are only 13. Uh, so they are called analog channel 0. You can see them labeled in here. Um, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to analog channel 12. They show up on certain pins and they start on port A. Um, for some reason RA4, just to mention it, does not have an analog channel. That's just what they chose to do. And you can see that it does kind of jump around a little bit, um, especially on the RB side. Usually in this class though, we max out, we need about four ADCs, uh, so we only ever use about four of them to be honest. So those are the ones that we use. If you have an analog input, you put it at RA0. If you have two, you use RA0 and RA1. And that's just how the system works. We'll talk more about that in the next video lecture. The library functions that you have to use for the ADC, they come from a library called ADC.h. The nice thing about ADC.h is that it's included for you by default in the template. Uh, the reason we included it for you by default in the template is because we actually included this whole statement uh, in the template code. What this statement does is it turns on four analog pins. And we'll talk next time about how you set a uh, different number of pits, pins than four. But there are four on the green board, so we show you how to set four in the template code. I like examples, so what I really want to get to is an example. So let's talk about the library functions and how we can use them in an example. There are actually a bunch of library functions that you can use, and they look confusing at first. It's going to turn out to be really, really simple. Uh, first off, I'll say that close you're never going to use, because uh, once you turn on ADCs, you're going to leave them on. Um, open is one that you're going to do once, and you already kind of know how to do open, and it's actually the easiest. And that leaves you with these four other functions. Uh, these four other functions actually work out really nice because they always get used in exactly the same way. You use them one, two, three, four, um, and we'll show you how that works. And it's really, really easy. So yeah, there are six, but they're an easy six to learn. The way that you do an analog to digital conversion is this simple four-step program. Step number one, say which channel you want to read. So you just say which pin you're going to read. So really the ADC you can only do one at a time. So you say, hey, I'm going to use this channel. So you set it. Fine. Next is you start the conversion process. So you say convert ADC. It knows to use that channel you selected. 
you then simply wait for it to finish. Um, so you call this function. So busy ADC is a function you can call. And while it's doing the conversion, it will return one. Um, but as soon as it's done, it'll say, hey, I'm no longer busy. Um, so it'll return zero. So what we've got here is sneaky. It's a while loop on only one line. You could have used the opening curly braces. So right here, you could have used opening curly braces and closing curly braces. But we want to do nothing. So like we, we want to do nothing while we're waiting. We're just going to spin our wheels and do nothing. If you want to do nothing, you can actually just put a semicolon. Um, and that's kind of like an opening, closing curly brace. Um, it's the same thing. It's just different syntax for the same thing. And so we put that on there to say do nothing in the while loop. And then as soon as we're done, we just read the result. So we say read ADC, and that's it. So it's always these four lines. So to look at it kind of in a, in a piece of example code, uh, you'll set the ADC only once, even if you're using like four different ones, you only set it once. You set it up in the main while area, and then you've got this chunk that you're gonna put wherever you need it. In the example that we're gonna do, we're gonna put it inside the, uh, the while one loop. All right, so let's go ahead and do an example. I think it's the, the best way to learn. So what we want to do is we want to open up MPLAB. We want to create a new project. Uh, we're going to make it a standalone project, just like always, uh, the PIC 18F4520. Oops, 4520. Right there. I'm going to choose my PIC Kit 3. You can see I'm already connected to my PIC programmer and I'm going to select the compiler that we always use and I'm going to call it ADC uh, on the LCD. Kind of a catchy name. <laughs> Camel case however you, uh, however you see fit. Into this I'm going to put a couple things. Uh, I don't care about interrupts actually. We learned them yesterday. Great. Um, I don't need them today. So ADC on the LCD. Um, it's going to use the LCD, obviously, so we're going to have to add LCD.C, which we just leave the same name. We've used the LCD so many times now, I'm almost tempted to like include it in the template, but I'll leave it out. Cool, so we've got our, uh, our header files there, our header file and our implementation file, and then the same things we always do, right? So include LCD module.c. We're going to need a couple variables. We're going to need a line one and a line two eventually. So I'll just make them both character arrays with up to 20. And then we're going to need a place to save the value. So I'm going to say RA0 value. Um, and I'll just make that one for now. All right, so coming down here into main, uh, you can see that we've uh, already set up for four analog pins. I'm just gonna leave that for now. Um, and then these other things, I'm just gonna blow away because um, I know the only thing I'm gonna use is uh, port E and the LCD. Speaking of the LCD, we better do an init um, and a clear. So I just type part of the word and then I hit control space. And then what I really want to do is I'm going to do it forever. Uh, I'm going to do um, an ADC conversion. The ADC comes from ADC.h, which you've already got imported. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set um, channel ADC. Oh, it looks like there are two of them. And I'm going to set it to ADC underscore CH and you know you could hit control space but zero is the one we want and then you're gonna start the conversion and then you're gonna while it's busy uh, do nothing um, so you really could put an open and closing curly brace um, and just have nothing inside of here and then you know once you've once you've kind of moved past that uh, then you do a read ADC um, instead of doing it like that, though, I'm just going to use the uh, the semicolon approach. So wait for it to finish, um, and then once it's finished, then read it. Um, and we would like to do an sprintf. We'll start off on line one, and I don't know, we'll print like um, ra0 
and we'll say percent D so what I'll put a percent 4d just to make sure it always prints the same number of characters so it's going to always use four characters and I'm going to print the ra0 value and as usual I'm going kind of fast but that's because you can pause the uh, the video if you like and then on line one I'm just going to do an xlcd uh, put ram string of line one uh, so there's the code uh, hopefully it uh, hopefully it does something useful. Uh, we'll see here in a little bit. So what I want to do is I want to uh, go ahead and run it. And the nice thing is is that on the green board we've already connected for you. Uh, we've connected uh, a bunch of different analog inputs. We've got two um, two Phillips screwdriver turnable pots. I hate that message. Uh, and then we've also got a joystick, so there's actually four analog inputs. So the one we're going to play with first is um, the potentiometer. If you look closely above the potentiometer uh, on the upper left, it'll say uh, RA0. So what you can do is if you turn it all the way counterclockwise, it'll go up to 1023 or very near. Um, and then if you turn it the other direction, um, it'll begin to turn down and then it'll get all the way down to zero. If you put it in the middle, it'll be about 512. And the way that little bit of magic works, uh, we talk about more in the lab, uh, but it's actually creating a voltage divider, um, and by turning it, you're moving the resistance on the potentiometer uh, to give those analog readings. All right, so that's all we wanted to do this time. We just wanted to get something out there on the LCD uh, to show you how to do one reading. We'll bring you back next time for a few more details. See you then.